instrumentation. Okay. You know, gauges. There's kind of a lot of them more we got on there. We got, you know, speedometer. We got oil pressure. We got uh, uh, volts. We got fuel level. We got, you know, low fuel lights. You know, we got oil lights, brake lights, uh, over temp lights. We got alternator lights. We got, you know, there's a lot of stuff. We even got, the, you know, the the turn signal lights, the check engine light, not in this class. Uh, talk about that in 244 class. So I got a video on that. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, we have all these different, oopsie, different uh Thanks. Hello? Okay. Still on. All right. We got day gauges, you know, swinging needles or light bar display. Uh, and then we usually have some type of sending unit. Now, <clears throat> a lot of times these sending units are shared across a network. So while, you know, the fuel gauge will go to the instrument cluster, and then it'll go to the PCM because powertrain needs to know how much fuel we have for EVAP testing, you know. Or it may go to a BCM, and then the BCM may divide it up to uh, uh, ECM, PCM, and IPC, the instrument panel. So, you know, they, they've become a little more complicated and computer-driven, but still they're the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, the warning lights, usually those are light bulbs or LEDs. Uh, signals a problem. Uh, oftentimes, you know, when you first turn on the key, it goes through a bulb check where all the lights, all the bulbs light up, all the warning lights light up on the dashboard so you can see that the bulbs are still good. You know, a lot of times they'll, you know, on a lot of cars, they'll sweep the gauges once, you know, to show you, you know, to, to prove out, to let you know that all these things are working. All right make a big deal about the different types of gauges and quite honestly it might here you know we'll just look at them real fast I'm not going to go too far into them so what we have is is we have Emma on this one uh, bimetallic we actually have a, a piece of uh, bimetal spring steel inside the gauge and this is literally you know just two pieces of metal that are bonded together and they have different expansion and contraction rates so if we heat one side it tends to bend we okay it'll deform and that's what swings the needle so honestly what we do is is we just use like uh, i'm picking on a fuel gauge you know this guy is just a variable resistor you know as the arm moves up this guy travels and we have a voltage drop across this guy which is in series with our heating coil, which varies the current going through our heating coil, which varies the amount of heat, which varies the amount that the thing bends. I don't know. Uh, div, div, ar, div ar, so I can never say this one if somebody wants to feel free. Uh, this one's based on, on, on magnets. So we have a permanent magnet, a horseshoe magnet, and then we have uh, a conductor, an electromagnet down at the bottom. And we apply a current to this, and it builds up a magnetic field, and that's what moves the gauge from one side to the other. Anyways. Uh, and then we have two coil gauges, uh, air coil gauges. All right, so here it is. And it's basically the same thing. And now I'm using, like, a temperature sensor on this guy. This is variable resistance down here. So if we look at how this is wired, this guy is in series with this variable resistor sensor. So, you know, as the resistance in this thing goes down, current goes up in this coil, which causes it to pull to this side. So instead of just being like a permanent magnet, one of those horseshoe magnets like in the last one, it's two electromagnets. So this one's got B plus coming in. This one sinks right to ground, so it's full magnetic field. It pulls the needle one way, and then we use this other one to drag it over to the other side. There's a three coil. This adds a bucking coil into it. And honestly, it's just kind of the same deal. We have, you know, three uh, magnetic coils inside this gauge, and this is a fuel gauge. So, like, you know, that 
B plus coming in, straight B plus runs for this guy and it runs down to my uh, uh, sending unit. And, and as my sending unit gets further along, you know, further away, it's more and more resistance, which reduces the amount of current to this guy. And then these two, this bucking coil and the high reading coil, are in series with each other. Okay? So it's using this to cancel this one out. See how it's north and south and south and north? Get it? Uh, anyway, so they use this, you know, magnetic field, this opposing magnetic field, to weaken the magnetic field of this low reading coil. And then it pulls it over to the high reading coil. It's really pretty simple. And honestly, you're not going to get in here and you're never going to troubleshoot out a gauge. Well, I mean, you are, but, you know, by you get, you get to that point, you're pretty sure the gauge is bad anyways. And then really, what are you doing? You check and make sure you have 12 volts coming in and you're making sure you got your variable resistance from your sending unit. Okay? Sending units. And this is where we usually go. Now we have thermistors, which are temperature sensitive, piezo-resistive sensors, pressure switches, temperature switches, and variable resistors. Uh, we're going to run through this one. Here's, here is a uh, thermistor. And the way this, that's the wrong picture. Anyways, so uh, they change their resistance based on temperature. There's two different types. There's PTC and NTC. Positive resist, or PTC is positive resistance goes down when the temperature goes up. So we get more resistance as the uh, as we get more resistance as the temperature goes up. And NTC, it gets more resistance as more resistive as the temperature goes down. Other than that, they pretty much work the same, it's except they're opposite. And we use that usually with you know some type of a temperature sender to you know transmit this current. Anyways, here's a piezo resistive. So what we have is it and again that's the wrong picture. Anyways, so uh, this uh, uh, it, it, it's a variable resistor. You know, as this dome pushes up, it pushes on this contact, which is sitting on the variable resistor arm, which it's a single terminal output. So this just feeds a resistance out of it. So have you caught on that these are pretty much all resistive qualities? It's easy to test. All right. This is a pressure switch, and this is used in, in oil pressure switches, and a lot of oil pressure gauges use the same type of switch. Uh, and, and it's got, you know, a dome of oil pressure down here, right, and that pushes up on this contact. So if, you know, uh, there's no oil pressure, like the car is off, this guy is all the way down, and it grounds this lead off of the spring. So it drops down here, and this guy becomes ground. I got ground on one side of my light, 12 volts, 12 volts on my other side. Here's, here's my pressure switch right here. So, you know, this guy grounds the light bulb, causes the bulb to turn on. Now, a lot of times they use these with an oil pressure sending unit, or instead of an oil pressure sending unit. So, you know, I'll pick on Fords. Fords do this. It's not... You know, you have an oil pressure gauge. It's not really an oil pressure gauge. It's based off a switch. Get it? So when it sees that switch open, it puts the gauge in the middle. When it sees the gauge closed, it sends it all the way down. You can also get oil leaks out of these type of, you know, or fluid leaks out of these if the, the, the diaphragm starts to go bad. And it just kind of leaks out the, the, where the uh, wiring comes out of it. Sometimes they they can leak pretty good. I've seen them shoot oil out. And then here's the temperature switch. And they don't really use these anymore. This was really used to like turn on a overheating light. And they also used them for fan control, electric fan control, a million years ago. And we're back to the bimetallic strip. When this guy heats up, it bends, makes contact, turns on the light. Pretty simple. All right. Uh, we're going to break right here, and we're going to come back into part two, okay?